Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome you to another episode of the Gaffin Brown Show. I'm Lamar Gaffin. And I'm Robert Brown. And today, we're just going to have ourselves a very short show. We're going to talk about the NFL and the college football, what was going on last week, and also what was going, what was going to happen this week as well. But uh, that's for right now here, going looking back at week six in the NFL, uh, what, are the one thing, what are the most things that pretty much stood out for you in that one? Oh, Tom Brady and his uh, replacement Patriots. Um, pretty impressive win. Uh, the comeback, went to start off so dominant, then lose the lead, then come back and wrap it up in five for a uh, very impressive win in another game added to Tom Brady's legacy. Yeah, I mean, I, I really have to say that about that game. It's just, it was like he basically snatched St. Fans' hearts in that game. Just period. Uh, what can you say? I mean, you either hate him, you love him here, but you're always amazed at what he does. And once again, he adds in another, you know, another chapter to his legacy. Right. And um, I, I, another key note of the game was how Jimmy Graham got shut down. I mean, uh, Jimmy Graham's a, a huge part of the Saints offense, and he was held to, I want to say what, maybe a, was it a handful of catches? Or? I think it was probably – if at all anything, one. Yeah, no, one. Yeah, had, like nothing. Yeah, yeah nothing. No, fantasy no touchdowns, nothing. So it was very impressive from New England defense. The defense that was criticized, you know, early in the season for not being as good, and it's just you know, you know, you see the Saints. You know, they had this high-powered offense coming to the game, and you saw New England pretty much, you know, take Morpheus Colston out, mm-hmm. take uh, Jimmy Graham out, you know, uh, kind of make them a running team. And uh, New Orleans really had this game, though. Uh, New Orleans gave up, you know, so many opportunities for New England to come down and make those plays to, you know, take the game. Uh, just too safe play calling from um, Sean Payton. And that's exactly it, pretty much. Because when you know that if you give Brady enough time here for him for you to burn you, uh, more than likely, he's going to go ahead and do it. I mean, from personal experience, seeing it happen with the Cowboys uh, just like two years ago, about this time, same same place, Boxborough. Uh, the Cowboys, I think they had a little bit of a lead. Then here comes the Patriots. They uh, Tom Brady mounts a game-winning drive and just does does it like that. More often than not, though, and that's that was the case here. I think they had like two chances, three chances, probably put the game away. And they couldn't really do it. All they could just manage was just a measly field goal. And, you know, a four-point lead is nothing for Tom Brady. Right. Absolutely nothing. And, you know, you saw it happen. And, I mean, the guys making so much happen with very little. Uh, definitely, you know, he's the MVP race along with Peyton Manning. And, you know, some people argue that, you know, they're more impressed with Tom Brady's feet than they are with Peyton Manning. So, you know, uh, just the rich keep getting richer. You know, Tom Brady keeps making successful things happen in New England with very little. And that's true. I mean, we had, and in this game, he had Amendola, only had two catches though, no yards, and had only actually a one rush for a yard, another yard. But um, and he was knocked out of the game due to a concussion, and yet, uh, Rob Gronkowski's heard and all that stuff here. And a lot of people have been saying here, when is when is Gronk coming back? And also, I mean, how? I mean, Almondola. I guess they knew what they were getting with about the injuries, but it just seems like injuries have been a little bit of a, a lot of an issue for them. Right, right. Uh, it's just very unfortunate for them, you know, to have so many injuries come early in the season. But you know, uh, right now with their record and you know their division being kind of you know a little weak. They're, they're still able to, you know, hold number one spot, you know, and be able to compete every day on a high, every uh, Sunday on a high level. Right, and that's all they just need to. That's all they just need to go ahead and do. Just continue to do do well, get uh, get into that division lead, and that's pretty much it. In that case, uh, another game that happened that actually was pretty interesting. Also, was um. I guess seeing once again, it seems like the Houston Texans they're bottoming out. Yeah, uh, it looks it looks bad. Uh, we saw Matt Matt Schaub 
uh, throw another pick six to get injured. Um, uh, it's a season ending injury or it's not a season ending injury, but I think it's it's one that's probably gonna have him out for like a week or two. Right. And now uh T J Yates, the guy that, you know, who's still a little unproven, you know, uh, a little green comes in and he throws a pick six and it just was a, a tough day for uh, the Houston Texans. And right now, they look like they're probably going to be fall to the to the lower ranks of that division. We have a uh, team like the Indianapolis Colts, even though they lost this past Sunday, but they look proud to make a run. And they also have Tennessee Titans, a scrappy bunch who they pull off wins. They pull off wins and they stay engaged. Yeah, and right now I could just say I could just basically see here for Texas, it's not looking pretty and. We, we had said this before, time after time, that Matt Schaub, if he, if, if he doesn't perform well, he was going to be the downfall of this team. Didn't, didn't expect it to really come in the middle of the season like this and that they're 2-4 and four right now. Uh, looks like they're going to go after, uh, they're, they're actually going to try give Case Keenum a try here from, from the University of Houston and his second year. So that's going to be interesting to see right there. But it's just going to be, it's just tough right now, and especially with the fans here. The fans, they don't like Schaub right now. I mean, burning his jersey, showing up at his house, and now cheering for him while he's injured. I mean, it's a tough situation right now if I would match Schaub. Yeah, it's pretty unfortunate. Um, I don't know his contract situation, but more than likely it seems that he won't be coming back. Uh, yeah, it's just very, it's very unfortunate. Uh, and also, you know, Gary Kubiak's future's in peril, it seems. Uh, he might not return to things, but get turned around, so. Yeah. But Texas team with a lot of questionable. It definitely so. And it's, it's, like I say, with a team that just has so many high, so much high hopes right now, for it to really come crashing down, and, I mean, hey, we could just go ahead and say here, if they didn't win their first two games, we could be seeing them as 1-5 or 0-6. Right. And if you think that they're mad now, if they were at that point, just think of how they would how they would been at that point. It's just yeah. it's just kinda of unfathomable one day. Another game uh that actually had a pretty interesting one here was um going to it here uh, just uh I guess the Bengals and Bills had a had a pretty good game too. That one that one went to overtime. Uh, Daddy's Lewis had a pretty decent game here, but once again, it was just Another the Bills. Another injured Bills quarterback. All right. Yeah. I don't know what it is about the Bills right now because it seems like they just got uh, Matt Flynn. Right. So, they need EJ Manuel back, but it just looks like EJ is not coming back for another four to six weeks. Wow. So, I think that's going to be another tough one right there. Um, so, now we got... We got ourselves basically two, two six and no teams, and also, well, we got three teams now that are winless still: um, Giants, Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay, and Jacksonville. So yeah. the state of Florida is not looking too good right now. Which team do you think is going to win first? If I had to go ahead and pick, I think it's going to be the Giants. I, I really will say the Giants. Um, that Monday night game looks like it might look like it could be it. That one could be. That Depending one could how be. Josh right. Freeman looks, and you know, of course, Adrian Peterson. It could be the first way. I mean, Monday Night Football. You know, mm -hmm. uh, the last time I saw Eli have a uh, solid game this year was prime time on Sunday night. So. Right. I think, <laughs> bless you, too. I think if there is a team that probably has a chance to, you know, you know, make that comeback or anything else like that, I think it has to be, you know. I think it has to be, you know, it's got to be the Giants. I mean, there's the rest. I mean, their their next few games in their schedule looks like Minnesota, Philadelphia, Oakland. I mean, I think they would get at least one game, two games, maybe even three games out of that. Tampa Bay, I don't like their situation right now. Tampa Bay is just in a mess right now, and I feel like Seattle's going to get fired sometime right. soon. And Jacksonville, I mean, they had a pretty good showing against the Broncos. Right. But I don't think Jacksonville is gonna win. I don't think Jacksonville is gonna win a game uh, anytime soon. I don't. I don't. I don't like their chances really. So I just think it's gonna be the Giants. How about right. you? 
I agree with, as well with New York. It has to, something has to fall through. They have too much talent offensively. Mm-hmm. They have a better defense and a uh, you know old school hard nosed coach. And, you know, the, I mean Eli Manning, he's got to be better than this. I mean, oh yes. There's no way he could be taking this hard. I mean, maybe this season will be an arbitration. And next year, maybe he'll be back to Rome. But right now, it's one of his, it's, it's definitely the worst season of his career. Right. Far yeah. worse than fair his rookie year. Right. Uh, it's just horrible. It is. So hopefully he'll be able to turn things around and get them to respectability. But you know, it's, it's definitely hard when your season is already in the gutter. Like, right. Right now, I, I find it hard to believe they can pull off nine wins or eight wins to get in the playoffs. And then with Dallas looking the way they look, and even Philly, I, I don't think they have enough to, to pull out that division. Right. And even though this division is easy, I don't think they're going to win the division. I, I wouldn't say win the division. And pretty much that'd be the only way for them to really get a playoff spot in this case right now. Right. But um, I think they can make it interesting, maybe. They still have the talent to make it interesting. But, um, you know, like, they're better than the 16 right now. It's going to be interesting to see what they do with King Nix. Yeah, he's been a reported trade bait. Uh, he, he's had teams like the 49ers, and uh, I heard rumblings of Kansas City, well, you know, potential teams wanting him. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting to see what they're going to do with him. And then considering the fact that he's due, well, he's expecting a max deal. So right. we're going to see what they do with him. It's, it's just very, very unstable in New York right now. Absolutely. But on the other side of New York, you have the Geno Smith show, and even though they, you know, didn't win against Pittsburgh, right. he had, you know, not the best game, but he still showing glimmers of, you know, he might be the future there. There's potential there. There really is potential there. Um, they're three and three. A lot of people didn't even expect them to be probably three and three at this case, but uh, Gio's the future right now, and you know they're looking pretty good. I feel like that they could they could be a lot better than what a lot of people said that they were going to be. And, you know, I'd say not this year, but maybe in about two, in about one or two years here, he could have them compete for, like, playoffs. Yeah, he, he totally could. I, I see the same thing. Uh, I mean, I think, it's, I think it's likely. I mean, you look at the way he played that Atlanta game, and you would think he, this was his second season, the third season, you know. It was, it was uh, a very mature performance. And, you know, that team, he has, he, he's working with so little, really. You know, uh, a lot of the guys on offense, you know, are different. And, you know, he's made them work mm-hmm. compared to, you know, Sanchez, you know. So it's very likely that he, he's definitely going to be the guy that they, they settle on, at least for next season. Right. And, um, I mean, it, you can only go up right now. Basically, uh, as you said, he's, he's made some people heal and uh, – Jeff Cumberland here, who's basically taking over for uh, Kellen Winslow because he got busted for four games with u- using performance enhancements. So, yeah, Gino's doing a pretty good job right now. And uh, Sanchez, I know he's gone pretty much. But, you know, Gino, this is this is his team right now. So it's pretty much it for him. Um, I guess... And also right now, the Chiefs are 6-0 and here still. The Broncos are 6-0. And, and it looks like we're getting ready, almost getting ready for that showdown in about three weeks. You think both teams will stay undefeated until wow, now? Wow, that's hard. That's really hard. Because uh, uh, Denver has a big game at Indy this Sunday. And uh, I'm not I'm – not, who's, who's Kansas City playing this Sunday? Kansas City got Houston. Well, yeah, I think that, yeah, I think they should be able to be Houston. But, yeah, it's going to be tricky. And I do think if Kansas City wins, I honestly think that Denver might might get their first loss. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I think Kansas City, they've had a good defense. They've had a good defense since uh, Romeo Cornell was there. I just think uh, with uh, Andy Reid there, they've been able to make their limited offense work. Uh, they eat clock, they control the ball, and their defense plays hard and old, and they get turnovers, mm-hmm. which is a recipe for, you know, wins. success. Yeah, yeah, wins and future back, possibly playoff success. So 
I think they can beat Denver, but Denver. I, but the thing about Denver is, if they can't, if they don't set the tone, mm-hmm. if they if they don't stop that offense, keep paying pay man out the field, there's no way Kansas City can keep up with the offense. Right. So that's the only thing they have to stick to their defensive game plan, run the ball, control the clock, and you know just just keep the ball away from pay man. Right. And it's gonna be really interesting to see what's gonna happen. Um, like I said, we still got a month to go. Exactly a month, actually, right? As at this point, so you know, you know, who knows what could happen here? One of these teams could go into a cold snap. I hope not, but you know, one of these teams could go to a cold snap. One of these teams could win a game. I mean, could lose a game here, or they just all stay undefeated at this point and then just continue to go out there and just do well. It's I think it's going to be really interesting to see, and a lot of people here they're just so excited to see the Kansas City Chiefs like back to. In a way, well, uh, I should say relevance, maybe. Right. So you know, it's is is a pretty good thing because we know the Kansas City Chiefs. They had a talented roster. They had they had some talent on that roster last year, but they just didn't have a coach to bring it together, and they didn't have a quarterback to bring it together. You get both both things are more important are very important in the NFL, and look at what's got you right now six and zero record. Right, and um. Basically, the Alex Smith era is going without a hitch. Uh, so is the Andy Reid era. And, uh, you know, they just look present right now. We'll continue to see how they continue to look, but right now, it's uh, Exactly. So, going into now the, uh, the college football ranks here, we had ourselves some decent matchups, but the, I think uh, starting off with one of the upsets here, Utah beating Stanford was the one that kind of shock everybody. Right, right, right. Definitely shock everybody. Uh, Utah, a team that we saw. Oh, this yeah, Utah, they had a couple of, um, I think they went ahead, they took everything away. They basically just, uh, they basically had a, they had a game plan, they stuck to it. Um, Ran uh, past the ball a good bit, ran the ball a good bit as well. Gave Stanford not a lot of chances to really come back into this game. And really, they <clears throat> they jumped up ahead 13 points. And, you know, it was by, by then it was just too late for Stanford. They tried to work late, the late magic, and they couldn't do it. Right. And, you know, it's, it's something that's kind of bittersweet, you know. Um, I was definitely impressed with Utah now. Do you think Stanford's out of the uh, the uh, the Big Twelve race, the Pac-8, or? I don't think so. Not not by not even by the long shot because if they beat Oregon, they're right back in there. Uh, but they can't lose any more games. If they lose that game to Oregon, they're out. Uh, if they and uh, they're out of that race, and they're not pretty much out of the title race. So, I think now that's going to be the key. For them, it's now more of a must-win for them if they want to try to get into a B- any BCS bowl game at that point. So, um, but that game that's sometime soon, I think next month as well. So that's going to be one of those things as well. And another thing was that also happened, well, kind of an upset for everybody was Missouri beating Georgia, like they did 41-26. And with that game there, uh, Mizzou basically took it to Georgia early. Ms. Georgia start, did come back a little bit here, but Mizzou basically held on. They won the game uh, 41 to 26, and now Missouri is now up, up to number 14 in the in the in the, uh, in the nation here. Right. Now, are you impressed with Missouri, or do you think it's just? But the opportunity taking a lot of for your thing. I think that it's just that this was the uh, I'm really impressed by them now. That that's this was the game that really turned my eye to them because I didn't get a chance to look at them any anytime soon until uh, then. So you know, just kind of impressed me. Now, do I think they'll win the East? No, but I think they they have set a foundation for themselves to probably get themselves to a bowl game or something like that. So. Um, it's going to be interesting to see, though, because they don't have their quarterback, uh, James Franklin. He's not going to be around for the rest of the regular season. So it's going to be interesting to see how they do without him. 
But uh, for right now here, I feel like that they got themselves in a pretty good situation to probably shock some teams. But it's going to be interesting to see how they do against South Carolina and Florida, which I don't think they're going to win those games. Um, let's see. And then the other imp impressive thing that happened, too, was Texas against Oklahoma. Here in that game, it was 36-20. And the Red River robbery, basically, and it just was shocking here because to see Texas go out there, uh, get themselves a win here, and just turn out to, you know, uh, seem like it saved Mac Brown's job a little bit, saved his saved his job and also saved his, uh, you know, saved, saved him and basically probably put a year into his, uh, you know, to his career and everything like that. So, but it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen afterwards here. But right now, Texas has themselves sitting pretty at 4-2, 3-0 in the Big 12. And if they could somehow uh, probably beat Oklahoma State or Baylor, I think they probably got themselves back into the uh, into the ranks here. So uh, they, I think they're going to be pretty good right there, and we'll see what's gonna, what else is going to happen here. So we'll go ahead and take ourselves a little break real quick, and then when we come back, we'll give you guys our picks. This is the Gavin Brown Show. Now we're back with the Gavin Brown Show, and now we're just going to go ahead and uh, pick these games here real quick. I think we both probably would have picked uh, Seattle against the Cardinals, uh, 14th mm -hmm. the, uh, right there, wouldn't you say? Because I think right now uh, Seattle's up on Arizona, 14-3, and um, right now it looks like... Uh, once again here, the Arizona just got themselves a field goal in this game just to break the scoreless tie. But right now, uh, Seattle is doing a pretty good job with Russell Wilson throwing for two touchdowns. He has 90 yards already. And just seems like business as usual in that case right there. Uh, some of the other games that are also happening here, too. Uh, let's see, one of the games here, the Cowboys against the Eagles. And that one... Uh, I see Philadelphia has the line here by three, but I got, of course, I got the Cowboys in that game. Right there. Mike Vick is not going to be playing. Nick Foles will be playing in that game, too. So, we shall, um, let's see here for that one. And then you got the Buccaneers taking on the Falcons. I feel like Atlanta's going to go ahead and win that game. Uh, this is going to be a pretty decent game. Right now, I just don't think that the Buccaneers have enough in this case and I just think that it's pretty much not going to be I think that's a sinking ship pretty much right now and then you got the Falcons here at one and four right now so I got the Falcons in that one uh, another game here with a four and two matchup here between the Bengals and the Lions here and I feel like that one's going to go down to the uh, I think 
I think if I had to be a betting man and would pick that game, I feel like Troy's going to win that one. Um, just because I think uh, I think they got this one pretty much. I'm pretty impressed with what they're doing so far. Got them and the games at home, so for them. So I feel like uh, Troy's going to go ahead and win that game. Um, the Bills going to take on the Dolphins. Miami's going to play that one here, and I think Miami's going to get a chance to win this one. I uh, don't like right now how the Bills are doing without E.J. Manuel. He does so many good things for them. So I think it's going to be the Dolphins. They're gonna, and the Dolphins are pretty much coming off of five weeks. So I think it's going to be the Dolphins in that one. Uh, Patriots and Jets, games in New York, but I feel like the Patriots are going to go out here and win this game. I would not be surprised if the Jets do. But uh, I feel like the Patriots have got that one in this case. Shockingly, uh, the Bears and the Redskins here. Many people, uh, the Bears only have a line. They're only up by like one. Uh, they're favored by one point. But I feel like the Bears are going to go out here. And I feel like they're going to win this game against the Skins. Uh, kind of not liking what the Skins are doing so far here. Griffin still needs to try to get into the, uh, into the game here. I feel like the Bears are gonna they got a chance to need to you know win here. There's something's got to shake back for Jay Cutler, and I feel like uh, I know he throws a lot of interceptions here, but uh, he does throw the ball a good bit, and they have that poor secondary, so it's not gonna it's not looking too good for him right now. Uh, the Rams against the Panthers, I feel like that was gonna go with the Panthers. Uh, well, the Rams actually, I feel like that. They got the chance to win this one here. Um, I just feel like that this game probably helped them. The game against the, the game against Houston probably helped them out a little bit here. Even though uh, both of these teams had some surprising wins, but I feel like St. Louis is going to win this one and get over 500. Uh, the Chargers and Jaguars feel like this is going to be a Chargers one. For, for this one, but we have not um, but the Jaguars, at least they're not playing that bad uh, lately. Uh, another one here, the Niners against the Titans here, I feel like the 49ers have themselves, uh, they're going to win this game against the Titans. Um, still, Ryan Fitzpatrick is still going to be the quarterback for the Tennessee Titans, but I don't think that uh, um, I, don't, I don't, I really don't like him as the starter here. So I feel like the 49ers are going to, are going to go out there and win this game. But I wouldn't be surprised if the Titans find some type of way to win this one. Uh, the Browns against the Packers. I think the Packers are going to win this one too. Back to Whedon. It's not looking good for the Browns. So I feel like the Packers are going to get out here and win this game for them. Um, let's see. Then we have the Texans against the Chiefs right now. Um... I think the Texas, of course, that that, that that's a sinking ship right now too. I feel like the Chiefs are going to go out there and win this game. They're going to be six and zero to the season, uh, go to seven and zero for this season. So I feel like they're going to go ahead and take a win there. Ravens and Steelers, that game's in Pittsburgh. I feel like Pittsburgh is going to win this one. Um, but this one, of course, we know that this is going to be a hard hitting matchup, uh, left and right. This is going to be a basically a drag out fight and all that stuff so yeah the Steelers are going to go out there and win this game here for that Broncos and Colts games in Indianapolis I uh, got the Broncos though winning against the Colts um, luck didn't do too bad on his first time in prime time but you know you can just tell pretty much with the emotions here with Peyton Manning coming back to Indianapolis I feel like the Broncos are going to go out there and win that game uh, the Vikings and Giants. Um, the Vikings. I think the Vikings are going to go out there and win this game. It's going to be interesting to see how how uh, Josh Freeman does in his first game of, with the Vikings. But I feel like they're going to go out there and win this game. But I wouldn't be surprised if the Giants do either in New York. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, that's going to be some pretty good ones to see too. As far as next week. As far as this week is happening for college football, we have ourselves some decent matchups here this week. It looks like 
every everyone in the SEC has themselves a pretty good matchup. Uh, currently, we have a North Carolina Miami game here, seventeen to thirteen. Uh, North Carolina's up on Miami, so Miami still has a good bit. Uh, they still got another half to play to try to come back and stuff like that. So we'll see what they can do in that one. Um, next up here is going to be uh, well, some of the other games here that's happening. Some of the other big time games, of course, the Florida State Clemson game. That's going to be a big one. And I think that I got. Clemson winning this one very close here with that game being at uh, in Clemson Stadium. Uh, Auburn, Texas a and I feel like Texas A&M is going to beat Auburn, but would not be surprised at all here if Auburn somehow gets the win in that one. UCLA and Stanford, I think Stanford wins this game. Would not be surprised about UCLA though, but uh, Stanford's going to go out there and win this game, I feel like, with that one. Florida, Missouri, I got Florida in this game. Uh, I got to really see how Mizzou does with their backup quarterback first before I pick them. But uh, I got Stanford in this one, too. Um, let's see, some other, some other pretty good matchups here that's happening. Here, in, um, I think Minnesota is going to lose to Northwestern. Um, let's see. Other big games here as well. Here, I think it's pretty much going to be uh, all of that's pretty much going to be the case here. Pretty much everything is, else is going to be business as usual here and all that. So, we'll see what else is happening. Here as far as some of the other games here that's going on. Here in Louisville, they take on UCF on Friday, and I feel like Louisville's going to win that game. Um, USC and Notre Dame. Notre Dame's going to win that game, I think. Here and pretty much uh, let's see here what else is going on as well. Here, so I think that's that's pretty much going to be what's going to happen here. I'm not liking this. Let's see, let's see some of this other some of the other games here. Ohio State they should be able to take on Iowa. Take Iowa down. I feel like in, in that one. So it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen there. So we'll go ahead and take ourselves another break, and then we'll just uh, pretty much wrap it up real quick. This is Gavin Brown Show.